Okay. So the common drain amplifier, also known as the source follower, just to recollect. So common drain means the drain node of the transistor is common between the input signal and the output signal, right? So the simplest source follower circuit looks something like this. I have a V in here, which I'm applied to the gate of the transistor. And I connect the load resistance to the source and I pull the output from the source of the transistor, right? So this is my um, common drain amplifier or source follower. In the last class, we looked at the gain from the circuit. So the small signal gain of the circuit. AV is given by GM times RO parallel RL divided by 1 plus GM RO parallel RL, right? Again, remember this term, right, is a large term. So generally, the ratio of this is going to be close to 1. So typically, when we look at gains of these stages, they're roughly around 0 0.8 to 0 0.1, 0 0.8 to 1. Right. So when you look at the source follower, the source follower is not really a gain stage because the source follower, um, or also we call this a voltage buffer, right? You don't really use this stage to give you gain, but we use it because it is able to provide us a good low R out, and we look at that. So now let's first start and say what is the Rn of this amplifier? What is the Rn of this amplifier? Sir, infinity. Infinite. And why is that? Yes, sir, because it is at the gate, right? It's actually correct. Correct. So it's at the gate. In an R uh, simple model of transistor, the gate is an insulator. And so therefore, the I in in this amplifier is going to be 0, right? I in is equal to 0. And therefore, R in is given by V in by I in, which is infinite, right? So here again, it's a good voltage amplifier because at the input, it shows a very high input resistance, right? So it does not pull any current from the input signal circuit. So it's a good thing. Now let's look R out. So uh, there were some questions about how to calculate R out. So let me do calculation of R out with you again. So let's do how to, to find R out, right? So how do you how do you do these kind of questions when you want to find R out, right? When you want to find R out, what is the algorithm we use? We basically ground all the inputs, right? So the all the inputs, if it's a voltage input, you ground it. If it's a current input, you open it, right? So you essentially, all inputs are zero, right? Apply a voltage V0, and measure I0 at the output node, right? And therefore, your R out is going to be given by V0 by I0, right? So let's do that. Let's first replace M1 with its small signal model. So gate, drain, source, right? VGS. I have the current source, which is GMVGS, and I have R0 in parallel, right? So this is my M1, small signal model of M1. The gate of M1 is connected to V in, right? And when you're doing R out calculations, we make the input zero. So V in is grounded, right? V out is pulled at the source, right? So this node is going to be V out. What about the drain? The drain is connected to VDD. So this drain is grounded, small signal ground. Right? Now V0, the source is connected to RL, and it's gone to signal ground. So this is RL. Right? Now what we want to do when we want to calculate R out is, now I apply a V out here, and I want to find what is the expression for I out. Right? And if I find an expression for I out, then V out by I out will give me my effective resistance that I see at the output of this amplifier, right? So again, how do you solve this? Let's first look at the KVL in this loop. If I apply KVL in this loop, I have VGS plus V naught 
should be zero because there's a ground here and there's a ground here implies that vgs should be minus v naught right and so now when i want to calculate i0 i0 is nothing but the current entering the this node the current entering this node should equal all the current flowing out of the node right so the current flowing out of the node through rl is going to be v0 by rl flowing through r0 is going to be v0 by r0 right and what you have is minus gmvgs and the reason i put a minus gmvgs is gmvgs is oriented towards the source right and so that is a current flowing into this node now VGS is nothing but minus V0, so I can write this as V0 by RL plus V0 by R0 plus V0 by 1 by GM. Right? GM V0, I'm writing this way. So in other words, this now looks like a connection in parallel, right? So this looks like the current is flowing through three resistors which are in parallel with each other. So therefore, if I talk about R out, which is going to be V0 by I0, that is nothing but RL parallel R out parallel 1 by GM, right? Now, what can you say about this quantity? R out is going to be very large. Even if RL is very large, eventually 1 by GM is a small quantity. So what happens in this case, therefore, is your R out is small. And this is the advantage of the source follower is that among the three configurations that we looked at, right? If you look at common source, common source has a very high R out. Common drain has a common gate has a very high R out. Problem, the advantage with the source follower is that the source follower is the only single transistor configuration that gives you a very small R out. And remember, if an ideal voltage amplifier, you want R in to be infinity, R out to be zero. So therefore, you'll see that the, when you're creating an amplifier, right? What you do, you'd use the source follower as the last stage of the amplifier so as to get you that R out. And the good part with that is, you'll have to obviously design the circuit in such a way that this term is not much smaller than one, right? So that is going to be the challenge, that you don't want the gain of the source follower to be very far from one, but you want to utilize this source follower to reduce the R out of this, of the multi-stage amplifier. So we'll talk about multi-stage amplifiers in a bit. So the grounding which you've done on the right side of ah. the diagram, even if it was not for calculation of R out, it would still be grounded. This grounding will always be there. For R out, the only change we do is we ground the V in. Okay, so got it. Right? So if you're doing gain, then you would have applied V in here. This would have been a ground and then you calculate the gain of V out by V in. So when you're doing the gain, right, you're essentially treating it as an open circuit at the output. So there your I naught becomes zero when you're doing gain. Right, because it's a voltage amplifier. So when you do, we, what we do gain, if you if you look at the model of the voltage amplifier, right, the voltage amplifier model looks something like this. This is your V in, right, across an R in. You have a AV V in, right, and then you have an R out, right, and this is your V out. So what is AV? AV is nothing but the open circuit output voltage, right? So if there is no current flowing through this, through this circuit, AV times V in is the net voltage I develop here. So when I'm calculating AV, I will assume that V out is an open circuit signal. So that way I can calculate AV. Now when I'm calculating R out, what I do is I ground V in. So I remove this voltage source and then I I now apply a V out and see, okay, what is the net current flowing through this circuit? And that is going to give me R out. So that's, the, that's all we're doing. It goes back to this basic circuit model that we have in the amplifier and all so you know i not i not will be zero while calculating av when you're calculating av yes because it's an open circuit v not will be an open circuit okay. yeah all right so now let's look at a very simple biasing scheme for a source follower so if you want to bias the source follower again similar to our previous cases using resistors so biasing So how would you bias the source follower? Again, let's first draw the circuit. So this is going to be my amplifier, which is doing the work. I have an RL here, right? So what I can do is I need to get a voltage at the gate. So easiest way is to just use VDD. So I can just take this voltage. Ideally, 
you can tell me, you can ask me, sir, why are you using RG? Why can't I connect VDD directly to the gate? Because no current flows. That is true that no current flows. But what happens generally is that suppose there is a, a malfunction in the processing of the transistor and it ends up that the transistor breaks down or something like that, a large current can flow through the circuit. So always what we do is to prevent that, we always ensure that we connect a very high resistance in the gate circuit to ensure that we don't have any issues in case there are failures in the circuit. Right? So a biasing circuit would look something like this. I would connect V in through a coupling capacitor and I will pull out V out through a coupling capacitor here. Right? So Excuse me, be, sir. Yeah. Sir, that RG register, I guess uh, that would be true for every uh, biasing, uh, right? Yes, yes. But when we use the biasing in common source, for example, in common source, when you did the biasing, right? Uh, that time we had a resistor divider, right? You remember, right? So when you have a resistor divider like this, right? This is your V out, and you are giving your V in here, right? So when you're doing things like this, then you want your R1 and R2 to be high enough so that you don't have a lot of current flowing. This current flowing is basically a waste of power because all it's doing is, is setting up the bias voltage here. Other than that, you don't really need this resistors to do anything. And again, these resistors are going to be your input resistors for the, going to, uh, you know, contribute to RN. So you want your R1 and R2 to be as high as possible, right? So when you're biasing something like this with the resistor divider, Again, you want to use high resistors there. Now we look. So after today's class, you'll probably stop using resistors. And we'll talk about that. Resistor biasing is fine when you're building discrete amplifiers. Suppose you're building an amplifier on a breadboard, right? Uh, it's fine. But when we start talking about integrated amplifiers, we need to build them in integrated circuits. We generally do not like to use resistors. And we'll talk about the reasons why. Okay. So let's do a quick uh, problem. Yeah. Uh, so you were saying that uh, just you, you were saying that the uh, we use the RG because the amplifier might have some issues during manifold. the transistor transistor right sorry yeah mm -hmm. the transistor so instead of using a resistor why not like you know check if the transistor has an issue right? yeah it's so like a fail safe that's fine but sometimes as you use the amplifier it can age okay. so many right. a times electronics age all the time right. So hmm. you have to worry about the failure then. Nothing will fail at the first instance. I mean, if it fails at the first instance, it's fine, right? Because you normally when you're selling products, you test them before you sell them to your customer. So if it fails at the beginning, you know you're not going to sell a bad product to your customer. But the problem happens that when it goes to the customer site and then it fails. And that's what you have to be careful about, right? Because okay. you're giving a guarantee to somebody saying that your my amplifier will work for five years. Yeah, okay, sir. Okay, so let's do a simple problem. Um, so design a source follower for a drain current of one milliamp and a voltage gain. of 0.8 volt per volt okay you've been given so using this circuit using circuit one so you're given given mu and c ox is 100 microamp per volt squared vth of the transistor is half a volt okay let's keep it simple so lambda is equal to zero VDD is 1.8 volts and RG is 50 kilo ohms. Right? So this is the question. To design a source follower for a drain current of 1 milliamp and a voltage gain of 0.8 volt per volt. So, you have, so when you look at a question like this, so when I say design the circuit, so what are all the terms that you need to design for? Can somebody list out what are what are the things we need to calculate? Once you do that, then you can do with the you can go ahead with the analysis. But tell me what are all the RL, things I'm asking? RL, GL, G, uh, GM, okay, GM. Price of the sir WL. WL. WL and what else? 
what about this and you need to calculate the overdrive or the gate voltage right because you need to find the bias at this point right so when you say design a circuit these are the things you need to calculate okay. so now go ahead and tell me what you get So, but when we say RL, it's not an R answer, right? It's based on the load. Uh, typically, but in this case, so a uh, good question. So in reality, yes, RL is the load resistance. Here, what the RL is also going to control the bias condition. So in reality, what I would do is I would do an RS here and I would connect an RL here. So effectively, my net load is going to be RS parallel RL. But this resistor is important because otherwise I won't be able to control the current in M1, the bias current. Is yes, it clear? So in, in our case, just forget about the load. Just assume that there is an RS here. So assume it's RS or RL, whatever. Calculate those three quantities for me. So instead of the drain current, I could have given you a power sub. I could have given you a power condition, right? I would have said, so 1.8 volts, right? So I would have said, okay, the maximum power you can use here is 1.8 milliwatts. So that means from that you can calculate the current. Now, uh, let me uh, let me make sense. We, we give a maximum power condition, right? So when you want to pick the current, would you put pick the highest current or would you pick a current less than the highest current how would you how would you think about the design suppose instead of this question i said for a maximum drain current of 1 milliamp would you pick 1 milliamp or would you pick a number less than 1 milliamp how would you think about it could you repeat your question instead of this question instead i said design a source follower for a maximum drain current of 1 milliamp Sir, less less than one milliamp because if there's fluctuation and suppose the yeah, current goes. That's one way to think about it. What is the what can you tell me about the area of the circuit? Suppose I choose a smaller bias condition, smaller bias current. What can you say about the transistor? So you could uh, get away with using a smaller transistor. It's the other way around. Anyway, think about solve this question and think about what I asked. Get me some numbers for. RL, WL, and VGS. So do we have to do it like that day by assuming something? What do you want to assume? No, like how that day we assume that there's a particular... Uh... No, I think in this case, I believe it is direct. Right, so here it's there's no issue, right? What is B, what is VG? What is the voltage at this point equal to? Oh. Huh? I'm not calculated. How? What is the current flowing through RG? Zero. Zero. So what is VG equal to? VD. VDD, no? So you don't know VGS, but you know VG.
So a good idea normally is to write down all the equations you know or all the relationships you know in the circuit. Then you'll probably be able to start somewhere. Okay, so what do we know, right? So this point is VDD, right? VG is VDD. So we know that VGS plus IDRS or IDRL should be VDD. So we know that relationship because VGS is the voltage across the gate source of the M1 and that plus the voltage drop across RL should be VDD. So we know that. The second equation we know is half Kn prime W by L into VGS minus VTH, the whole squared is ID because M1 is in saturation, right? So we have these two relationships between. So if I know VGS, because I already know ID, I can calculate W by L. So I need to find out what VGS is. So here I don't know what RL is. But if I knew RL, then finding VGS would have been easy, right? So the question is here, I don't know VGS and RL, but I know something given here that the voltage gain is given. So AV is given to be 0.8, right? So because AV is given to be 0.8, what is the AV? AV is nothing but RO parallel RL divided by 1 by GM plus RO parallel RL. And in this case, lambda is 0, so RO is infinity. So this works out to RL by 1 by GM plus RL, right? Now, what do I know about GM? GM is nothing but 2ID by VOV or 2ID by VGS minus VTH, right? I know this. So in other words, I can write my AV as RL divided by RL plus 1 by GM. So this becomes VGS minus VTH by 2ID, right? Or this becomes 2ID RL by 2ID RL plus VGS minus VTH, right? And so what do we know? We know that VGS plus IDRL is VDD. So VGS plus one of this IDRL is going to be VDD. So this can be written as nothing but two IDRL by VDD minus VTH plus IDRL, right? All I'm doing is substitution. And from that I know, and this is nothing but AV. So in this now I know everything. I know AV, I know ID, I know VDD, I know VTH. So all unknown here is RL. So if I solve this equation, I can get the value of RL to be 867 ohms. Right? So that so once RL is known, right? ID is known, VDD is known, I can calculate VGS. So VGS from equation one, right? Because once I know RL, from equation one, I can calculate VGS. And VGS will work out to 0.93. 3 volts, right? Now, once I know VGS from equation 2, I know mu and C ox, I know VGS, VTH, everything. So I can calculate my W by L and my W by L will work out to 107, right? So that's, so the, that's basically my design.
सर हे आर वी आर डिझाइनिंग अराउंड द बायस पॉइंट सो कॅपॅसिटर्स आर ट्रीटेड एज ओपन सर्किट राईट कॅपॅसिटर्स आर गोइंग टू बी फॉर डीसी कंडिशन्स कॅपॅसिटर्स ओपन सर्किट और फॉर एसी कंडिशन्स कॅपॅसिटर्स आर शॉर्ट या ओके सर सर आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड लाइक अगर कैटिंग आरपी अक्रॉस द ड्रेन एंड गेट व्हाई इज इट दैट द गेम इज नॉट चेंजिंग लाइक फॉर्मुला शुड चेंज सर आई एम सॉरी when you attach a rg across the gate and drain why is it like the gain formula remains the same uh, doesn't have any you go and calculate it tell me if that rg makes a difference to the gain okay so let's quickly summarize all the different amplifier types you looked at So let's do a quick summary. So we looked at four basic amplifier types. So let's talk about amplifier type. Let's talk about AV, R in, and R out. So this is a good table to keep in mind. uh and i think you should internalize this table if that will help you in the class so we looked at common source we looked at common source with source degradation right we looked at common gate and we looked at common drain or the source follower so in the case of the common source it was very simply gmrd right Minus GMRD again. I'm just doing the table for lambda is equal to zero. You can make a similar table for lambda not equal to zero. So in the case of a common source amplifier, the common source amplifier gives you a very high gain, which was dependent on RD given by minus GMRD. It's an inverting amplifier. What is the Rn of the common source amplifier? Infinity. infinity because the input goes to the gate what is r out of the common source amplifier when lambda is zero rd okay. now common source with source degradation we have a loss in the gain because of the fact that we've connected a resistance in the source so this is given by minus gmrd by 1 plus gmrs again rn continues to remain infinity right and the r out is given by rd again here this is true when r out is infinity if r out is not infinity this r out is going to change for the common gate amplifier it is a non inverting amplifier so your gain is given by gmrd what is the rn of the common gate amplifier at the common gate amplifier i give the input to the source of the transistor so what is the rn of the common gate 1 by gm 1 by gm good and the output is going to, the r out is going to be rd and finally if you look at the common drain amplifier the gain of it is one most cases right or you can write it as rl or rl by rl plus 1 by gm right but in most cases close to one rn is going to be infinity and the output resistance is 1 by gm so again if you look at now let's quickly summarize these right so if you look at these generally we will use this mode for gain because among all, all the three options right common source is the one which i like to use mostly for gain because it has the advantage of a high rn and a respectable gain the problem with the common gate is that even though it has a respectable gain because of the fact that the input resistance is less only a part of the signal is going to drop across the input of the amplifier right because of the fact that the rn of the amplifier is less so generally when we want to get gain right we will use the common source stage to give us most of the gain the problem with the common source is the r out which tends to be high if you want a high gain right and so what we normally do is we use these this one as the output stage or rather we'll use this as the final stage so what i do is ideally i would <coughs> create an amplifier which has a common source stage i'll get as much gain i want and then i'll end it with a source follower 
and the source follower essentially will help me get the low R out. Right? So we look at some. So generally, when we talk about amplifiers, nobody uses one single stage amplifier. What we talk about, therefore, are multi-stage amplifiers. So whenever you want to design amplifiers, right, you're not going to design it as a single stage amplifier. So when we design an amplifier, ideally what we do is we'll break it into multiple stages and we'll separately design each stage of the amplifier and then evaluate what happens when I put all these stages together and what happens to the eventual gain of the transistor of the amplifier. So going forward, one thing you should remember is that even though we'll be doing a lot of stage analysis, so you'll see like many times in the question or when you're putting across problems, you'll see that I would say design a stage of an amplifier, design a common source stage of an amplifier, design a common gate stage of an amplifier. Right? So when we, we look at these stages rather than thinking of it as a standalone amplifier. right? And so, so let's talk a little bit now about these multi-stage. And... Again, the analysis of this is very simple. Once you know R and R out and AV, right, you have to go back. We have done this in the introductory classes of the class, right? Once you know what the R and R out and the open circuit voltage gain of an amplifier is, you can cascade these amplifiers together. You should have no problems in calculating the effective gain of this multiple amplifiers. Okay? So before we get, so let's now take a step further and let's now start talking about how do we build these amplifiers. So far we've looked at these amplifiers using resistors and you know, simple analysis. So now we have to start thinking if I want to make this on an integrated circuit, right, which is what VLSI design is, um, should I go with resistors or what is the best biasing technique to use? Right? So let's talk a little bit about multi-stage amplifiers and biasing. So let's consider a very simple biasing technique that we looked at using the resistor divider, right? So suppose I wanted to bias this transistor in some amplifier circuit, right? Uh, let's say it's a common source circuit. So I have some V out or something here. And I have usually biased it the way we have looked at so far biasing it is doing a biasing circuit like this. Right? Now, all this is fine. So in the ideal world, when there are no variations, where everything is perfect, there are no issues. Having a biasing circuit like this absolutely is no problem. If I want to design the circuit, once I know what the VGS I need to design for, I will design the ratio of R2 and R1 in such a way that I can get that particular VGS. Right? So, that, so it's easy to do that. Now, <clears throat> What happens in reality now, especially when you're talking about design on chips and silicon chips, this VDD supply is something which is coming. So if you think about a VDD supply on an SOC, this is my SOC chip. So SOC means system on chip. It has the show components, analog components, everything. So I have a supply which is coming in into one of the pads of the chip, right? And then I'm going to use the supply to power up all my different circuits. And so I can have an analog block here, which has an amplifier. So many times what we do is this VDD, if I pump it directly into these various components, right? you can do that. But what happens with that is that when you do these kind of direct supplies or power supply to a design, then suppose there's a glitch in the power, right? Suppose there is a radiation attack or suppose there is a power supply cut, right? So if you connect these power supplies directly to the chip, and if there is a sudden surge in the power supply, then what's going to happen is that this VDD is no longer stable. So when this VDD is no longer stable, the current VGS is not stable. When current is not stable, ID is not stable. When ID is not stable, gain is not stable. Right? So what happens? happens to your amplifier is that your amplifier gain is going to respond instantaneously to any fluctuations you have in the power supply, right? which is something, again, as a good designer, you don't want that to happen. You want, when you have said that I'm going to design for a gain of, say, 70, right? 
70 volt per volt. I want to ensure that my gain stays at 70 no matter what. I don't want it to be dependent on the vagaries of the various inputs that I have to the system. Right? So in a problem with this kind of a biasing design is that one, with respect to power supply, this thing is going to vary. Now let's also talk about resistors. Resistors, when you want to design a resistor in silicon, it tends to occupy a lot of area. Right? And the reason is because of the fact that typically when we look at resistors we use in design, we need a high resistors, you know, in the kilo ohms or mega ohms. So designing a resistor in kilo ohms and mega ohms is not easy because silicon, we use doped silicon in most of the times and doped silicon has a pretty low resistance. So if I have to design a resistor for say 100 kilo ohms, I need to occupy a lot of area of, on silicon because I need that much area to design a long strip of silicon which is going to provide me that large resistance. Right? So generally resistors, one of the big problems is that they occupy a lot of area. So which means that your design is going to get larger. The second problem with resistors, right, or for that matter, any electronic component, but more so in resistors, is that resistors will generate heat. So especially in a, in a system like this, right, there is a continuous current which is flowing through the resistor. So when there's a continuous current flowing through the resistor, that resistor is going to generate heat. Right? There's a power dissipation I squared R in the resistor that power dissipation is going to come out in silicon as heat. Now what, what that means is that it is going to heat up not only the resistor but all other components next to that resistor on the silicon chip. And all of you know that Ni squared is proportional to exponent of Eg by T. right? So temperature is a big problem in semiconductors because the higher the temperature goes, your Ni squared goes up. When Ni squared goes up, all your leakage components are going to increase. So your transistor, which you assumed was not leaking in some node, if you assume some diode somewhere in the circuit, which is not leaking, when the temperature overall of the circuit goes up, the leakage currents are going to go up. Not only that, you have Ni squared going up, you have mobility going down, you have Vt going up. So when temperature increases, generally bad things happen to the circuit. Right? And so, therefore, when you're designing a circuit, you don't want it to fluctuate. So it's not only that VDD fluctuation, you don't want it to occur in your amplifier. You also don't want the amplifier performance to drift over time. Right? So amplifier performance will drift over time, primarily because of the fact that there is going to be aging of the components in the circuit. Now, aging is nothing but, you know, the properties of the, like, the mobility for in a transistor, if you look at when you say aging, typically means that the VT of the transistor begins to increase. And so the current begins to go down. So when you look at a transistor lifetime, say you're using a transistor in a GPU, and if you look at the ID of the transistor, say over 10 years, you'll see that beyond five, six years, the ID is going to drop to below 10%. And so therefore, when we talk about lifetimes of electronic products, that's an important, um, what do you say, tests we do when we qualify products is we do accelerated testing, we do accelerated aging and ensure that our aging process is not fast because if aging is faster, then your product will not meet the lifetime that is expected, right? And what happens when you have a lot of resistors, when you have in unnecessary heat being generated around your components, aging process gets faster, right? So to prevent that, you know, to have a circuit which generally will last long, will be more reliable, you want to design, you want to get rid of transistor uh, resistors as much as possible. So that's the bottom line. So, and that ensures that all your temperature dependent parameters also are in much better control. I'm not going to say that the temperature effect goes down. Temperature will continue to remain a problem. So whenever you design circuits, you always design, you check the design at 25 degrees centigrade. You also check the design at 125 degrees centigrade. You check the design at higher temperatures. And the reason being because you want to make sure that in the worst case also your design works. Right? But having less resistors in your design will help you keep your design less sensitive to temperature than it would have been with resistors present. Right? So therefore the first thing is whenever we use biasing we want to find a biasing technique 
which is less dependent on resistors. And so what we'll do is we use what is known as current mode biasing. And we'll talk about that uh, in the next week. So we use what is known as a current mode biasing. So instead of using resistors and VDD to control the VGS, I will use current sources to actually control the ID flowing in various branches of the circuit. Right? So that is number one. Now the second thing is to ensure that I have a power supply, right, which is less dependent on output variation. So we use what is known as a band gap circuit. Again, we look at this if we have time next semester in ADBD. Band gap circuit is an important circuit which we normally use a lot in analog design. And the band gap circuit basically is a multi-transistor circuit as around has around 20 transistors. And this circuit helps us design what is known as a temperature independent current. Or what we do is we compensate or temperature compensated current. So what we do is this band gap circuits helps us design a current. So the output of the band gap circuit is a current which is relatively unchanged with temperature. Right? So the temp I versus T is a constant. Now that current is basically now becomes your main power source of the circuit, right? Because you now have a current. So if you it is generated off the power supply of VDD, but we generate this current in such a way that this current does not have any fluctuations due to temperature. We'll also add in other circuitry in the band gap circuit to prevent voltage spikes from showing up in the current. Right? And so that circuit is something which we won't do in this class. So what we'll assume in this class is we have this somewhere on the chip, we have this temperature compensated current or I source. Which is so being what generated. you said about uh, being a fluctuation independent. So while starting to talk about band gap circuit. Right. So I'm saying that the band gap circuit will also have certain architectures to prevent fluctuation of VDD being translated into the output current. So we'll okay. ensure that this output current is relatively stable. Right. So again, since this requires advanced concepts and design we'll come back to this if time permits next semester in adbd but in this class what you want to assume is that you have this temperature independent current source on the chip so whenever we start design when you start looking at power sources right this power source is essentially a current so you're generating a current in some part of the chip which is going to be this um what do you say it's going to be a current which is what you want to use for biasing because it's relatively independent to the input parameters. So what we'll talk about therefore in the class in the next week is we'll talk about current mirrors, which are the primary biasing mechanism we'll use in amplifier circuits. And the current mirrors are nothing but take circuits by which we now replicate this. So this single current is generated in one part of the chip and we replicate this current whenever we want to design amplifiers. So you'll see that when we do amplifiers, we'll be doing this current replication. So this I source, I will basically use that as my mother power supply, and then I will copy this current into all other branches. And when I do that copying technique, the properties of this I source, the temperature independent properties of the I source are going to get reflected in all the copies of the current that I will create. Okay? And so the circuit used to do that is known as a current mirror, which we'll look at shortly. So therefore, what does this mean? So therefore, going forward, when I want to draw an amplifier, right? Suppose I want to draw a common source amplifier. A common source amplifier, I will draw like this. So I'll have an I bias. Now, obviously, in the ideal world, this I bias is a independent current source. We have no issues. In reality, when we build it with transistors, eventually all this will be built with transistors. So this I bias will not be a current, will not be an ideal current source, will have its own resistance and all that, right? So, and will have its limitations. So 
you we'll study a lot more about it in adbd when we start doing a lot of current uh, sources but essentially now you have to start thinking that instead of using voltages and resistors as your biasing conditions we use a lot of current sources as a biasing conditions right mm -hmm. so let's assume that suppose i want to do two stages uh, of a comp suppose i want to get a high gain one way to do a high gain is i connect two common source stages in series with each other so i take the output of one and i send it through another common source stage so this is i bias 1 this is i bias 2 m1 m2 right so suppose i assume that this is an imperfect current source with say r o c 1 and let's say roc2 right and this is m1 m2 so what is the net gain in this circuit what is so if i have a circuit like this what is av r in and r out of this circuit so i have a cascaded so what i've done is cascaded two common source amplifiers so let's talk about r in what is the r in of the circuit the simple part So this is a common source circuit one. This is common source circuit two. What is the R in of the combined circuit? If uh, R in will be infinity in the first. Very board. good. And why is that? Because it's going into the gate. Correct. Right. So no matter because of the fact we have the ideal gate here. No matter whatever you connected beyond the common source stage. the i in which is going to flow is always going to be zero right because you have applied it directly to the gate of the transistor so whatever you have connected after the common source stage makes no difference right so this r in is going to be infinity at all times now what can you say about r out of this stage or let me ask you a question is so let, okay let me let, let's go step by step okay oh, sir here roc and roc2 what are those those are the resistances of the imperfect current sources okay sir right so let's 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 do common source stage 1 let's draw the model of common source stage 1 so what is the small signal model of the common source stage 1 i have v in right with an r in 1 right a v 1 into v in or av1 into v1 let's call this v1 this is ro1 right so this is my first amplifier i then connect it to the input of the second amplifier right this is same thing what we did in the initial classes this is v2 and v2 i've connected to av v2 this is r out and this is my v out okay so first of all what is the value of av1 and av2 what is the value of av1 minus gmrd minus yeah so what is it in this roc1 is it roc so assume lambda not equal to 0 if lambda is not equal to 0 what is the value of av1 rog1 parallel r not it's going to be ro1 parallel roc1 right that is the gain of the stage what is av2 what is the voltage gain of the second amplifier stage what is the gain from this point v2 to v0 gm2 ro2 parallel r g2 good right so this is the gain v in to v2 that is the gain and from v2 to v0 that is the gain right now the good part of the cn cs amplifier is what is the value of rn and rn rn1 and rn2 infinity infinity, infinity. Right? which means that because rn2 is infinity i have the entire open circuit voltage that is av1 times vn falling across rn2 right if this was a common gate amplifier things would have been different 
because my RN2 would have been um, because my RN2 would have been one by GM, right? So if this if the second stage was a common gate amplifier, my RN2 would have been very small, which have led to me figuring out if this RN2 causes a problem in the common source stage, right? Because RN2 is also very high. I don't have an issue with voltage division in this case, right? And so in this case, what can you tell me about the net R out of this circuit? What is the net R out of this cascaded circuit? So how do I calculate R out? I ground V in, right? And I apply a V out and measure I out. What can you say about R out of the circuit? Is it going to be RO2? Is it going to be RO1? Is it going to be some combination of RO2, RO1? So shouldn't it be RO2? It will be RO2, right? And again, the reason is because of the fact that this RN2 is infinity. So essentially isolating these two amplifiers, right? And so whatever is flowing in is purely dependent only on RO2, right? Which in this case is going to be RO2 parallel ROC2. And so what can you tell about the total gain of the cascaded circuit? AB, what is it equal to? Product of gains. Product of the two, right? Again, that is working because of the fact that this is infinity, right? And so the total gain is now going to be positive or negative? Positive. 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 GM1, GM2, RO1, parallel ROC1, RO2, parallel ROC2. So this is going to be the net gain of this cascaded common source amplifiers that you have. Okay. So whenever you do cascading of amplifiers, right, you want to essentially ensure that you get the advantages of cascading. So for that, therefore, you have to always go back to the circuit with RN, R out in place. And once the RNs of the voltage amplifiers are infinity, life becomes very easy because then you don't have to worry about any voltage division when you're connecting the two amplifiers together, right? All right, so I'll stop here and we'll continue. What we'll do is we'll start with an important amplifier um, configuration in the next class on Monday, which is known as the cascode amplifier. So we'll start with that, okay? So I'll Sir, stop uh, here and take any questions. I uh, sent an uh, invite for like a doubt session tomorrow at the lobby available then. I'll take a look. I've not yet looked at my calendar for tomorrow. Okay, so, so can you move to the first slide once? Uh, the one after this. Thank you. And also in the slide where you summarized all the uh, transistors, yeah, in this, uh, what might be the benefit of using a CG? Uh, so we look CG at it, uh, CG, we use it when to want to increase the bandwidth of an amplifier. So when we do frequency response, you'll see that CG gives us a very large bandwidth. So when we start worrying about the frequency response of amplifiers, then we'll use the CG stage to actually improve the bandwidth of the, you'll see that the CS stage has a very low bandwidth. So when I use a CG stage in conjunction with the CS stage, I'll be able to improve the bandwidth of the amplifier. Fine. Thank you, sir. Uh, so could you show the uh, values of the answer to the question? That's all. Thank you, sir. Okay, there are no more questions, then I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a good weekend.